Hello, my name is Jas, Jas Milam. I'm an artist and an art therapist. Um, art therapy means that I use art as therapy and in therapy to help people feel better. <laughs> um, and I have brought a fun sculpture project today that I'm hoping you will um, enjoy and feel better afterwards too. It's a sculpture. Um, when I talk about sculpture, that means I'm working with three dimensions. That means that the questions I ask are gonna be how tall, how wide, and how deep. So this is an example of a sculpture that I made from just bits and pieces of wire toys, feather, and beads, much like what you all have available to you. I was going with a magical creature, a crazy creature of my own making. Um, you can see that I wound up with a fire breathing dragon that can fly when I put him in the air and that can play the drums when I put him on the table. <laughs> so I'm just using my imagination to make something out of nothing which is what art is. Um, I want to talk a minute about how to start with the materials that you all have. The inside of a sculpture is called an armature. It would be like the human skeleton is to the body. The armature would be to the sculpture. And you have a piece of wire here that makes a fantastic armature. Let's see, I'm gonna get started with just a little armature, something to go inside of the sculpture and see if you can tell what my armature is for. I am twisting and bringing this around and down. You might be able to see now that it is becoming the beginnings of a human figure. Whoops, there went my arm. So I can wrap this armature in clay and it will be movable. When a piece of art is movable, we call it mobile. If a piece of art doesn't move, we call it stable. Once I wrap clay around my person armature, I'm just doing a quick demonstration here for you. Leaving the clay on the inside. and wrapping the clay around it, I'm gonna wind up with a, with a, a figure that can wave, that can move because of that wire inside. So that's one way to approach it. Another way to approach a movable part is to use scissors. And make a little catch ring. I'm twisting the end so that, for instance, if I wanted to put a tail <laughs> on this figure that moved, I could affix it this way with my hook. Trim this off. and have another moving part right here with the tail. Once I get it covered in clay, I'll be able to add details like eyes or feathers. Um, yarn or other elements. 
And I think I want to do something really special for the head. So I'm going to take this green foam that I have and get it started here a little bit with my scissors. Slip it on. Now I have a head. Pull my tail up, get my legs down. I think I'm going to make some eyes combining clay with these beads. Sticking a bead on a piece of clay, I'm then going to place it right here for the eye. Let's see, I have three black beads. I think that this critter's gonna have three eyes. One, two, three. And then finally, the clay works really well to join things together and to hold things together. And then finally, I think I want to do like a great big peacock ending back here. So I'm going to take a little bit more clay. Fix it back here. And give this guy a flaunty feather tail. So as you can tell, I've made this creature up. Three eyes and a rainbow tail you don't see every day. Once you finish your sculpture and decide whether it's a stable or a mobile, you might even want to add one of these pieces of yarn so that you can hang it. Making something out of nothing, sometimes getting silly, can make you feel better. So I hope that you will enjoy making these crazy critters as much as I have enjoyed sharing them with you. Using bits and pieces of things you have on hand to make something out of nothing. Bye-bye.